Hey there guys, so I'm back with another movie review. Now this this movie that I'm going to talk about is a personal favourite of mine. It's one of my favourite action movies. In fact, I'd probably say it's one of my favourite movies of all time on a personal level. Uh, I want to talk about this movie, Blood and Bone, which came out in 2009. Now Blood and Bone was directed by Ben Ramsey and stars Michael J. White as a elite martial artist who is recently paroled from prison and goes on a quest in order to fulfill a promise that he made to his best friend and cellmate while he was inside. And um, this is a martial arts movie. The movie is is very, very heavily centered around martial arts and, you know, real gritty, um, R-rated, bloody, street-level violence. And that's just my type of movie. I mean, you guys that have watched my other reviews will know that I love this type of movie. But what really, really... What really gets me about this movie and what really, really makes me happy watching this movie every time I watch it is how this movie is directed, particularly how the action sequences in this movie are directed. This movie, and I actually said this about one of my other reviews when I reviewed the movie Out for Justice, which was had, had similar kind of um, action to this movie, but not quite as stylized. This is a perfect example of how you do an action movie. There's lots of wide shots, you know, the, the cameras basically stand back, they show you the full shot, the full set, you can clearly see what's going on, and they let the actors and the martial artists and the stuntmen, they let them just get on with it, you know, there's no quick cuts, there's no shaky cam, there's no quick editing, there's no, you know, blurry features, there's no, you know, close up on the guy's face, so you can't see what they're doing, you know, to try and disguise the fact that these guys don't know martial arts, which is what you see in a lot of recent movies, particularly a lot of movies like this, which was straight to DVD. Uh, a lot of them just don't put in the effort nowadays, but this movie from 2009, it was a breath of fresh air for the time, and it still holds up today, almost a decade later. Uh, this is a fantastic movie. Uh, it gets right into the action. The very first scene of the movie takes place in the prison, and you get a, a cameo appearance from Kimbo Slice. Now, those of you who follow MMA will know who Kimbo Slice is. He was a very popular... MMA fighter several years ago and rest in peace he died a couple of years ago too so um, I believe it was a couple of years ago anyway that he passed away but yeah he's in this movie he makes a few appearances as basically this uh, hired thug in the prison and uh, <laughs> he gets his ass kicked by Michael J. White as does his whole crew and I absolutely love that scene man I mean the way that Michael J. White and it's it's in a wide shot you see the whole the whole action sequence is in one wide shot and you see Michael J. White kicking the shit out of these guys, and it's realistic, it's gritty, you know, he kicks these guys, he, you know, wets his, wets his prison shirt, and then uses it as a weapon, uses it to disarm these guys, because they come up to him with knives, and it's just a beautifully directed scene, there's a couple of, like, Aikido takedowns, um, you know, a, a bit of Taekwondo here and there, you know, it's just a, a really, really expert martial artist Michael J. White and it really comes across in these movies and, and right away from that first fight scene you get a real taste of what you're in for for the rest of the movie and I, I love it when a movie starts like that and thankfully the rest of the movie holds up you know this movie is very well paced there are no slow pointless boring dialogue sections that that could easily have been edited out there's none of that in this movie like I said, it's, a, it's a, a very well-paced movie. It's only about an hour and 25 minutes long, so it's not a very long movie. Um, and, and I like that with an action movie. Action movies like this don't need to be long. Like I said, the action sequences are brilliant. And plot-wise, now I don't really want to get too much into the plot, uh, because there is there are a few things that you learn later on in the movie, which actually adds a, a surprising amount of depth to the character. And a surprising amount of depth to the, to the plot, which actually is quite thought-provoking. And, and I really actually did enjoy the plot of this movie a lot more than I thought I would. Now, um, as far as the uh, the acting in this movie goes, like I said, I mean, Michael J. White does, a, does a, a very good job. I mean, he's not only a great stuntman and a great martial artist, he's also a very good actor. In fact, the reason why me and my friend back in the day when this came out, the reason why we decided to watch this movie was because we watched the... Uh, Undisputed 2 movie, which also starred Michael J. White when that came out, and I really enjoyed that movie, I really enjoyed Michael J. White's portrayal of the character in that movie, that's another movie I might I might review one day, um, that movie came out in 2006, so that was like three years before this, I think, so um, yeah, I already knew going in that Michael J. White was an actor that I liked, 
Um, the other actors do a pretty good job. You know, the, I, I mean, obviously Michael Jai White is the is the star of the show. Um, another MMA fighter that actually makes a few appearances in this in this movie. Well, well, an MMA fighter and a former wrestler is Bob Sapp. I'm sure some of you guys know who Bob Sapp is, but he's this big, huge, you know, muscular black bodybuilder type who's just, you know, roided to the gills. And there's a scene in this movie where he's in a car getting pumped full of steroids. You know, he's guzzling pills and, you know, his, his handler is injecting into his arm. And he's, he's just, he's got this big roid gut and he's this big scary, like really, really hulking, imposing, intimidating villain. He's one of the villains in the movie. However, he's not the main villain. The main villain in this movie is this character called James, who, I just got to say it right now, the guy's an absolute bastard, horrible villain, um, really, really unlikable and, and a really, really, you know, evil, sadistic, um, manipulative, control freak who is basically a street pimp, but he's kind of ashamed by the fact that he's a street pimp and he wants to be something more, you know, he, he has a real, real ambition and desire to be like a, a Genghis Khan type figure. You know, there's a there's a, a scene in the movie where he has a, a poster of Genghis Khan and he's got like swords and suits of armor all over his dojo, which he has in his personal house. And he's talking about how he really wants to rule the world and he wants to be a major player on the in the international um, fight game that he's involved in. Because although he's a, a street pimp and a hustler, he's also involved in uh, underground street fighting. So he has you know, Bob Sapp and all these other guys who are his enforcers, and he, he has these guys out in the street fighting for money, um, yeah, they, they make a lot of money off the gambling and whatnot, but you find out later on in the movie, and again, without going too much into the plot, because it's not really a spoiler, that there are some major players, you know, internationally, that are involved in underground fighting, and, and this is what this guy's trying to get involved in, and, uh, yeah, Michael Jai White goes after this guy and pursues him, which, again, is going deeper into the plot. I don't really want to say why, but it's quite an intense and quite a dark, gritty reason. You know, this guy did something really bad and, you know, Michael Jai White is trying to help somebody out and, yeah, keep his jailhouse promise. And it's a, you know, he's, he's a really noble character in this movie, Michael Jai White. I really like, you know, his portrayal of Bone. You know, he really comes across as this silent but strong type, you know, kind of a cliche hero. But at the same time, they don't do a lot of the other cliche things that movies like this usually do, where they try to, you know, add like a forced love storyline. There's no love interest in this movie. And there are quite a few women in this movie, but thankfully they didn't try to force some bullshit love interest. They didn't try to force some, you know, I've got to save my family, this, that, and the other. You know, there was no cliches in this movie. That's another thing that I like about this movie. There is absolutely no cliches whatsoever. Um, and, and like I said before, I mean, just, just the stunt work, um, you know, the, the martial arts, the wide shots, the acting. Um, you know, I had an absolute blast with this movie. And, and you know, I'm, I'm struggling to find a thing, other thing to say about this movie because... To be honest, it's just so simple. That's another thing I love about this movie. That's what it's the same thing I loved about Undisputed Two was it's just such a simple plot, but that's surprisingly deep when you get into it. Great acting, um, great martial arts, great stunt work, and it's a real shame. I've got to say, it is a real shame that the director, um, you know, he really he really didn't do much after this. I, I don't think he actually directed a movie after this. I'll need to double check, but I, I'm pretty sure this was his last movie. Also, um, it's a shame that this movie didn't get a theatrical release. It was a straight to DVD movie. And that really sucks because I, I really think had this movie had a, a theatrical release, even though it's R rated and it was, you know, a B movie to a lot of people, it was still a really, really well done movie. And I think a lot of action fans would have enjoyed it. I really do. If, if the film had a little bit more hype and if it was pushed a little bit harder I'd, and, you know, if it got a theatrical release, I think this movie would have been much bigger. And I think that a lot of um, action directors nowadays would be looking at this to try and model their own movies after because, like I said earlier in the video, a lot of action movies that come out with, within the past few years have been completely terrible. I mean, people were going off their nut about the fucking Black Panther movie which came out recently. Uh, you know, p people were trying to say that that was a great action movie with such a good plot and, you know, trying to act as if... You've never seen a, a black guy lead a movie before. You know, a lot of the comments I was reading, oh, it's, it's great that we've got a, 
a movie with a black cast and a, and a black hero. If you want to see a great movie with a black hero, check out this film, Blood and Bone. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make I don't want to make the whole thing racial, but you want to see a great movie with, with a, a, an African American guy as the lead role. Check out this movie, or check out Undisputed 2, much better movies than, than Black Panther, with fantastic action sequences, well done action sequences, competent producers, competent stunt work, competent director, and competent actors, people who know what they're doing, not a CGI clusterfuck, which was Black Panther, you know, this is how you do an action movie, people, you know, directors, this is how you do it, look at this movie, Look at movies like Out for Justice, uh, Brawl in Cell Block 99, which was a recent movie. Um, um, what was the other one I was thinking of? There was uh, Undisputed 2, I think I might have already mentioned. Yeah, look at these movies if you want to know how you do a proper action movie. You know, with uh, proper stunts, proper choreography, proper fighting, and hire actual guys who know what they're doing. And that's what they did in this movie. They had MMA fighters. You know, guys that have boxed, guys that have done like Tai Chi and Taekwondo and Aikido and, um, you know, kickboxing and all that stuff. I mean, Michael Jai White has a, an extensive um, martial arts background. The guy's done a heck of a lot of martial arts training in his life. And I believe he competed in like tournaments when he was a kid. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I did see a video of him as a teenager in some like karate or Taekwondo tournament or something. And he looked pretty good. So, you know, this is a... A really really good actor and he's, he's somewhat like 50 years old now so it's a shame that he probably won't be in any more roles like this um so yeah yeah really really great movie if you're into action flicks and you want to see a great action movie definitely check out this movie blood and bone fantastic movie one of my favorite movies of all time um i'm not sure which which movie i like more out of this and um the un you know the, some of the movies in the undisputed franchise because i really loved all the undisputed films uh, the first one, not so much, although I did enjoy it. Uh, I do have them all on DVD. I've got the fourth one on Blu-ray, uh, and I plan to review some of those movies. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, Michael Jai White, who stars in this movie, was the, the main character in the lead role in Undisputed 2. He wasn't in any of the other ones. So um, yeah, really, really great movie. I really recommend it. Um, I'm glad I got the chance to review this movie because it's just a great movie. And I said on my channel recently that I'm going to be reviewing some older movies, not just recent movies, um, and this is certainly one I want to talk about because it's one of my favourites, so let me know what you guys think about this movie, and uh, what do you think about my review, thanks for watching.